question for you. Now, this is, this is interesting. Does evil seed struggle to produce fruit? It, it doesn't. God's Word struggles to produce fruit in your heart. Why? It's not the same. What is your heart? It's what? Deceitfully wicked. And we plant God's Word in it. Now, we've got, we've got to begin to receive the nature of God and plant that Word in there. And the more we plant, the better things are for uh, the seed that is going in. But evil seed goes in real easy. You ever notice, you ever notice how easy it is to think negative thoughts about other people? I mean, it just, it's just natural. It's you, you, some kind of judgment against them. They dared walk into the same room where you are and breathe your air. And the, the judgment begins and to, or to have bad thoughts about situations or, or, or fear. Remember, the number one motivator of mankind is fear. What is fear? Fear, go ahead. Faith. Fear is faith that something bad is going to happen. That's what it is. And, and we experience it. We have emotions to it, and we believe it, and we walk in it, dictated by that belief system of fear in our lives. Now, I'm going to give you the definition as that I wrote down many years ago about what fruit is, and you can, uh, I, if you want to write it down, you can, but it's three lines long. Here it is. Fruit Fruit is whatever is produced naturally in a life. It is whatever is produced naturally in a life from the words planted in the heart of the person. Fruit is whatever is produced naturally in a life from the words planted in the heart of the person, which when nurtured, which when nurtured become beliefs and then actions. Fruit is whatever is produced naturally in a life from the words planted in the heart of the person, which when nurtured becomes beliefs and then actions. The day is coming in this country and not far off that to be a Christian will probably be illegal. The day is coming in this country not too far off in which killing and uh, stealing from Christians will be a good positive thing. The The war has been lost. And the reason is because of places the church, again, dropped the ball. No, I shouldn't say the church. Parents. The, the church at one time in this country, the church and parents were responsible for education. And the church and parents gradually gave that away. And it's over on the government schools. And the government schools, the, the leftists understood something. If, if we, generation after generation, keep teaching these people lies, they eventually will believe the lie. And the church stands up and goes, 
Oh, yeah, well, there's no law. That didn't go over very well, did it? That didn't sound real strong. We'll put this out to committee. We don't want to offend anybody. It's true. The homeschooling movement was an attempt, and that is why this is why it is hated so much by the government. Just hated. Um, they know that homeschoolers are not going to be believing all the propaganda. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of Christian schools, private Christ Christian schools, teach the propaganda also. They let it into the school. And the church, of course, has blinked the eye on evolution and creation and uh, resurrection. It, it, it goes on and on. What I'm saying is the battle's lost. I remember when Obama started pulling some of his stuff and people said, can you believe? I mean, conservatives and Christians were just wringing their hands. This is, and it all happened so fast. It didn't happen all that fast. It did not. Everything was in place. And the only thing that even slowed it down was it, it irritated a few people that still believed in something. And they made some mistakes politically. Um, and God has been gracious to us, but it, that is not going to always last. You're, uh, you're young enough that you're going to see some of this stuff. We're, you're already seeing it. There's, there's a lot of, of prejudice. We've already seen it some in doing business uh, a few times with, with different people. They didn't want to have anything to do with us because we were Christians. And we didn't, you know, run in there and tackle them, do anything. We were just being who we were, but they knew who we were. And there was uh, prejudice in doing business. And some don't, didn't want to do business with us openly, did not want to. Okay, everybody get that wanted to get the definition down of fruit, get it down? You good there? All right, Ms. Davis? You're sure doing a lot of, uh-uh, okay. All right, anybody, anything before we go on with this? All righty then. In a believer, fruit is what is produced from perseverance. Had to throw the word in. Is what is produced from perseverance in abiding in Christ. Turn to John 15. This is where we're going to camp for a while here. John chapter 15. We've talked about John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 before that this... These are the chapters. This is the time where Jesus sort of pulls the gloves off and goes, all right, here it is. And these, these chapters, when you're meditating on them, there's something, it just does something in your heart. It's, it's amazing, the emotional response that, that most people, I know believers, that have toward this. But in a believer, fruit is what is produced from perseverance in abiding in Christ. Perseverance and abiding in Christ. So, uh, Miss Davis, read verses 1 through 6, please. 1 through 6. John 15, right. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. You are already, already clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. One more. It, one, I'm sorry. If anyone did, does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up and they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Okay. That's, that's the first way that we produce fruit 
through perseverance, and that is abiding in Christ. Uh, the next thing is through prayer and meditation on the Word. Miss Davis, will you read 7 and 8, please? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Very good. And the last way that a believer produces fruit through perseverance is in death to self, in walking humbly. If you would read, Miss Davis, 9 through, let's see here, um, 13. Okay. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that, your, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Okay. Um, John, I'm going to turn, let's turn over to John 12, just real quickly, and look at verses 24 and 25. And truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. You, you got that? There's, there's the death to the self. Now, uh, before we read the next verse, understand these are connected to the, the verses we just read. Jesus is not just saying, oh, look at me, look at me, I'm the one that's going to die. No, wait a second. If it's good for if the master, well, the pupil is also going to have this. Verse 25, he who loves his life loses it. You want to put it this way, a selfish man doesn't learn to live. A selfish person loses life. He who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. And if it dies, look at, look at again, but verse 24. If it does not die, it remains alone. But if it dies, what happens? It bears much fruit. Now, turn back to chapter 15 and we're going to talk about a few things someone one time accused me of being the master of speaking the things that are blindingly apparent and we'll we'll do a little bit of that okay um, the first thing that I said that a believer uh, the way a believer bears fruit through the perseverance is abiding in Christ and I'm just going to go through some of my notes here and listen, just listen. It is not up to the fruit to produce itself. If you're looking for fruit in your life, uh, it is not up to the fruit to produce itself. Uh, it is not up to the fruit to decide what type of fruit it will be. This is a natural thing. It just simply happens naturally. The vine is responsible for those things. The vine is responsible. With that in mind, uh, we're, we're now we're, we're back to, to Christ. I am the true vine. It is the life in the vine that flows into the branch and that eventually produces the fruit. It's the life that is in the vine that flows into the branch and produces the fruit naturally and it produces the right kind of fruit. It is the life of Christ that flows through me that produces fruits, fruit naturally. Listen, the more of the life of Christ in me, the more of Him that is produced by Him and to His glory. The cleaner the path that life has to flow. Look in verse 3. What does he say? You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. The, more, the cleaner that we are, the more pure. The, the easier the vine puts it li its life. Now a while ago, 
remember when we were talking about the double mindedness and the fact that, wait a second, there's this tree that produces, it's a bad tree and that would be me, produces good fruit. How can that possibly be? Uh, because it is the life, uh, I, I'm, I'm also a branch, and, and clinging to the vine is where the life comes from. And that, that life naturally is of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and so you can judge me in whatever direction that you want, but what you're looking at in a person's life is the fruit. You, you need to be listening for words, watching behaviors, but those things are, those are fruit. And it happens naturally. It happens naturally. Um, John 15, 1, please. I'm the true vine, and my Father is a vine dresser. Folks, if there is a true vine, and Jesus took the, the time to say that to us, there is a false vine. The false vine are, is, if the true vine is Christ, the false vine is not Christ. ABC, anything but Christ. All not Christ. In other words, all, all ways and means to produce fruit that are not centered on abiding in Christ. All ways and means to produce fruit that are not centered on abiding in Christ is the false, that's the false vine. Um, one of my favorite parts of this whole thing is in verse 5 the very last phrase apart from me you can do nothing now folks I'm going to tell you something mega churches will say oh well we're, we got, we're, we're a mega church and we're able to do so much we're able to do so much because we have so many people and because of our size now one of the first times that mankind said something like that was at the Tower of Babel. Things haven't changed a lot, have they? Just because people get together and synergy, as they call it, spelled S-Y-N, um, does not mean that it is good. And it doesn't mean it is fruit belonging to the kingdom of heaven. It looks like something is happening. But according to Jesus Christ, if those people are not, if, if, if the, the, the actions, the programs, whatever it is, if it is not abiding in Christ, by definition, from Jesus Christ, they are doing what? Nothing. But look what, look what we accomplished. Nothing. You're being judgmental. No, I'm not. You don't have to be judgmental to call nothing, nothing. It's nothing. But look at all the people that we got. You know, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing. We, we built a new parking lot. I ran across an old song I had written a long, long time ago. And the lines, there's just, it's a tacky line. I had to laugh at it. Uh, I can't remember it now. One speaks in tongues, another speaks in liturgy. Um, I can't remember how, but love is commanded to all. And anyway, it's, it, the, the line, the tacky line is um, that we didn't, it basically, we didn't have time to save anybody. Why? The parking lot need to be paved. Uh, that and saved and paved rhymed in there somewhere, and I just I had to just laugh. I, I ran across it just looking through some notes. And went, oh, that that would be. I could never sing that song again, but it was pretty funny. Uh, we, we got a big parking lot. We got a big look. Uh, it's nothing. It's nothing. Even people that we would claim were quote unquote saved, which doesn't happen often. It's nothing if they did not abide in Christ, if abiding in Christ was not part of that. Ms. Davis, anything on this? Okay, all right, fine. All right. <clears throat> um, 
False vines are places in which we dwell that appear fruitful, but do not bear God's fruit in God's way. It's our false ways. It's our agendas, programs, selfish ambitions, attempted service to two masters, my ego and God's kingdom, and no true fruit is born. If we look, uh, in, again in verse 1, my father is the vine dresser or the husbandman. Jesus gives us, now again, this is one of these places that jurisdiction is really just, it's, it's a great place to learn about jurisdiction. What's Jesus' jurisdiction? What he give us, what's his responsibility? What is he? He says, I am what? The true vine. Okay, and then he says, here's what Father does. Father is the vine dresser. Now, he describes what the vine dresser does, and we know what a vine dresser does. We, we talked about this sometime, but vine dressers go to that vine and they cut it to pieces. Branches that are going off, honestly, very few get left because if you, if you ever pass by a, a vineyard, and there's a lot of them around here, they cut back on a lot of branches and they cut back, oddly enough, on a lot of leaves. Because producing leaves is not fruit. And any energy that the plant is putting out is not, they, they don't want, we don't want leaves. They have to leave some for it to grow. But the energy is to go into the fruit. And God looks at us and he does what? Th those things are not what needs to be there. A leaf might be pretty, but it's not. It's not the fruit, and it gets cut off. How many, I mean, I, I know in my own life, uh, all sorts of things that I used to go, oh, okay, this is going to be, I, I'll, I'll use this for you, God. Snip, snip, snip. Um, it, it wasn't what was to be. And it wasn't, because I, honestly, it wasn't abiding in Christ. It wasn't in having to do with His Word. Now, folks, this is just simply the truth. Father's the vine dresser, and then it says exactly what He does. He cuts off dead branches. He prunes branches that bear fruit that they may, may bear more fruit. Um, a vine dresser gives the vine support and protection. Um, but let me say this. The vines and the branches are submitted to the vine dresser. They're submitted to the vine dresser. Uh, one of those things, is, I've heard a prayer about it. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Somewhere I've heard that. Um, this, we, I think many of us, we, we are often concerned, what's God's will? Well, we're, that's where we're supposed to be. My will is supposed to be subservient to His. Fruit, and this, this is what I'm about to say. I've been saying it over and over again, but folks, you need to hear it. Fruit is not the responsibility of the branches. I'm going to say it again. What would this world, I'm not talking about the church, what would the world look like if we were following what Jesus Christ said? Actually went, I wonder if he knows what he's talking about. I'm not too sure about this. We need to put this out to committee again. What would it look like if we were making disciples the way that he... If Everybody that you knew was abiding in the Word, was meditating on Scripture and praying. I don't think we're going to see it, but it would be amazing if it happened. Uh, the fruit is not the responsibility of the branches. The responsibility of the branches is to abide in the vine. That's it. That is, it, it doesn't get a lot more simple. I mean, the branch bears fruit. But that only comes from abiding and submitting. John 15, 2. A branch which does not bear fruit uses energy that could be used elsewhere. It draws attention away from fruitful branches. It gives false expectations for fruit. It devours the life from fruit-producing branches. The Father, according to this, purges or cleanses every branch that bears fruit and fruit-bearing branches can expect to feel the sharp edges of the pruning knife, which is God's Word. 
John 15, 3. You're clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Again, Ephesians 5 tells us that we are cleansed with the washing of the water of the word. 15, 4. Abide in me. Now, the word abide in the Greek is meno. It means to dwell, live inside. Abide in me and I in you. Everyone, 1 John, you should have this marked in your Bible by now, but let's turn and look at it. 1 John 3. Twenty-four. Um, in verse 4 in 15, he says, Abide in me and I in you. Okay, how do we abide in him? Verse 24. The one who uh, keeps his commandments abides in him. The one who keeps his commandment abides in him. The keeping of the... This is a, one of those verses you need to have marked. It is one, this is the only way that we abide in Christ. That's it. There's no other way that I, at least I've seen in Scripture. All right? Um, if any man loves me, he'll keep my word. My Father will love him. We will come to him and make our abode with him. John 14, 23. We abide in him and he in us by the discipline of engrafting God's word. That's it. There is no, I, I haven't found it in Scripture any other way. I've looked, but I looked a lot, in fact. John 15, 5. Abiding in Him bears much, brings much fruit. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Uh, keeping His commandments, again, is the only way we do this. 15, 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. They gather them together and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. It's a picture of today's church. They're gathered together. They dried up. And every once in a while they put out a really bright, hot light. But it doesn't last very long. And eventually all you have is cold ash. Folks, franticness, franticness does not equate to fruit. Busyness does not equate to fruit. And programs do not equate to fruit. Um... 15, 7, and 8, verses that we talk about around here a lot. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you, for you, for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The pattern for, for fruit is abiding in Christ, His words abiding in us. We praying about it and asking, and it is done for us. That is naturally the way that fruit is born in us. We simply put the Word into our hearts and it joins up with the good life, the good nature of Jesus Christ in there, He being the vine, and that produces fruit. And then the, the, the uh, last way, again, we talked about was death to self. And uh, if you look in verse, verses 9 and 10, just as the Father's loved me, have also loved you, abide in my love. Well, how? Well, it, glad you asked, Jesus. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as so I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. The purpose of the law is not... If you ever, you ever notice something about the law, the law never says one thing about this is how you love yourself. It's always focused on God and all those other people that shouldn't be around anyway. Um, keeping God's commandments is abiding in God's love. Now, there's an, in closing, interesting verses that Miss Davis read a while ago. Verses 11 through 13. These things, what things? The things that he started speaking way back when about abiding and the Word and how Father is glorified. And look what he says in verse 11. These things that I just spoke to you, I have spoken to you why? So that my joy may be in you, and so that your joy may be made full. And this is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Um, my joy is made full, only made full, when I cease to strive to produce fruit. Now, you, you need to hear that. So many people are 
trying to make themselves right and to look good and to be good. And they strive for that. And there is no joy. There is no peace. Remember, the kingship of God, the kingship of God is rightness, peace, and joy resting in, in the Holy Spirit. And my joy is, can only be made full when I cease to strive to produce fruit and instead abide to bear fruit. I cease to strive to produce fruit and instead abide to bear fruit. My joy is only made full when I lay down my soul by keeping God's commandments and thereby loving others as Christ has loved us. My joy is only made full when my life, filled with God's word and therefore his love, is laid down for others and no longer for myself.